I'm so excited to have this next person come on because I need some advice. Me too. Uh, in my fantasy league, uh, she is she's an expert, a guru, yes. if you will. Uh, and oh, we boy. are very happy to have her on the show. Kay, I want to talk all things fantasy football with you. Welcome to the Rich Eisen Show with the Sky Brothers. How are you doing? I'm wonderful. How are you guys doing? We're great. We're okay. I mean, I, I, I'm eighth and ninth in my two fantasy leagues, so I guess that's not good. Not too shabby. How many leagues are you well, in, just out of curiosity? I am kind of a guru because I called Shane Vereen last night. And you did that not. Backfield, it's like throw a dart. You throw a dart, who's going to be the running back? I just, I literally just got back to New York from Boston. I was in Foxborough for the game. Was it going to be James White, Jonas Gray? Who right. knows? And it ended up being Vereen's day. Marine's day. I mean, he Marine had a day. Really. He had a day. He got behind the coverage on that one. It looked like it was a blown coverage. And, I mean, two touchdown passes, that's amazing stuff. Uh, that first are you one surprised is at are you surprised at all? Well, let me ask you, who, who for you has been sort of a, a nice, pleasant surprise this year? Fantasy and then who has been a bust? I'm going to go with Fred Jackson, right? I think the yep. theme of this season has been these veteran guys just still bringing it. Frank Gore, up until last week, also very effective. But Fred Jackson, he's 33 in Buffalo. He's involved in the passing game, especially now with Orton just checking down to him left and right. And this yep. guy's outproducing C.J. Spiller. His yards per carry is twice that of what people thought was going to be a top 10 pick in C.J. Spiller. So Fred Jackson's definitely a guy who's paid off for me. And people still don't give him enough respect as a uh, running back in this league. In well, hey, maybe that's good. He flies under the radar. You think he's still available in some leagues? No, probably not. No. Absolutely not. But he's a guy that I think isn't getting enough respect. But C.J. Spiller coming with six carries last week. I mean, now, now you've got to bench him and play F. Jack. You don't have to tell me. He's not getting team. fed at all. He's on your team. That's uh, terrible. All right. Well, speaking of, uh, let's talk about impactful fantasy injuries. There, give us like four or five guys who are out and it's going to affect your fantasy team this week. Oh, four or five guys who were out. Um, I can't think of any on top of my head. There weren't very many injuries last week. I will say the running back spot for waivers was depleted. Yeah. It was pretty desperate this week. But you do have a guy like, you know, Matt Asiata yeah. in Minnesota got the opportunity there. But we all knew a couple weeks ago, Jarek McKinnon is the more talented player, and he's going to surpass him. And he definitely did. He outtouched Matt Asiata 17-3 to just last week. So if you have Asiata, I would get rid of him, pick up Jarek McKinnon if he's available. Um, other guys on the, you know, running backs that you should maybe target. You know who I really love is Andre Holmes yeah. uh, out in Ra Raiderville, out in Oakland, and that's interesting because I'm touting a guy on the Raiders. But yeah. three touchdowns in the past two games, 20 targets in the past two weeks. I like seeing targets, and I saw that, you know, Derek Carr has been on point, and he targeted him 12 times against Miami before their week five bye. He came back and had, he had eight targets, caught four of them for 121 yards and two scores. The Raiders are always going to be playing from behind, so it's a good bet that he's going to have a lot of catches. Yeah, I always love it when my teams are playing from behind, and it's like you got a receiver or a quarterback, and you're like, come on, man, throw it up there. Just throw it up there. What about Jimmy Graham? You know, is, how dinged up is he, and is he going to have an impact, do you think, against a really good, really good Lions defense in Detroit? Yeah, you know, we saw him go down, and then everyone was pretty happy because he would have a bye week and he'd rest up. And we had, you know, one of the things we do have on Fantasy Zone Channel 704 is we have an in-house doctor. He saw the injury, and, you know, and everyone kind of thought that it was going to be okay. And then we get news just on Sunday that after the bye, he's expected to miss two or three weeks. Now, obviously, none of us know. You have to plan ahead. There isn't a tight end there that's going to step up and get any of, any of the work there. People are making a huge deal about Marcus Colson's going to get more of the targets than that's what I'm the hoping explosive for. rookie receiver. Brandon Cooks, he's going to be great. You guys need to pump the brakes on that. This okay. Lions pass defense is so legit. I think I'm sitting Drew Brees. I'd rather play Cam Newton over Drew Brees this week. They have put the kibosh on all fantasy quarterbacks and all receivers. No one's giving up less points to wideouts than this Lions pass defense. So, And I don't think it's going to be a high-scoring affair because on the other side of the ball, you've got – no Calvin Johnson. You've got a Matt Stafford who's thrown seven total touchdowns through the air so far this season. Stafford Golden Tate's infection. not getting it done. So I think they're going to – Reggie Bush is back and they're going to run the ball. That, okay, okay. So that's good. That's great advice. No, I mean, I want to talk about – not many guys are, like, picking up fantasy guys from Jacksonville. But, I mean, Storm Davis, why not – I why, always do. But, yeah, but here's my question. Why – you know, we're Michigan guys. <laughs> Denard Robinson, when he touches the ball, he picks up five, six, seven yards. Why are they leapfrogging him and not having him as sort of even giving him like 15 touches? He's not a, a great fantasy play, but what we're saying is he should be more involved. 
I mean, if I had all the secrets to the universe, gentlemen, I'd be doing I want you wrong. to have I them, need answers. I need answers. We're talking Denard Robinson fantasy value. I think he has a bit of an identity crisis. Is he a running back? Is he a wide receiver? Yeah. Um, I think that this Jags offense is completely depleted, and I'll be the first to admit I was a Toby Gerhardt believer mm -hmm. based on volume. I thought, yeah, he's you know, he's finally given an opportunity. Load. He'll be the feature back here. It is dismal. Say what you want. The offensive line is just the pits. Also, we talked about teams playing from behind. That is Jacksonville's story. Blake Bortles is going to have to throw. He's going to target Cecil Shorts the third. He's going to yep. target Allen Robinson. Right. I like those guys because there's so there's so much value there because people don't look at this as a sexy offense in fantasy, but somebody's going to get the targets there. Um, Toby Gerhardt, I thought, would be great. Then you had Storm Johnson step up last week, and he yep. had 10 carries for 21 yards. And you can say all you want about, oh, they wanted to limit his workload, and you can say all you want about Denard Robinson and him having evened carries yeah. throughout practice this week, but you don't know who's going to step up, and it is just a bad offensive line. Nobody's going to be successful, and they're going to have to throw the ball there and abandon the run. All right, I want your advice. I've got Russell Wilson, and I've got Aaron Rodgers in one league. Who do I play this week? I mean, you love the rushing ability of one Russell Wilson, but you 12 cannot. points last week. He you was terrible. You have to put yourself in the best possible. Right. Right. He was terrible. He had 20, 122 rush yards the week the before, week but before. you can't count on that. No. Yeah. You got to count on you gotta count you think on, A -Rod? Uh, Aaron Rodgers. A-Rod. All right, fine. Who do I, who do I not Absolutely. play? Eli Manning or Johnny Manziel? <laughs> Um, oh, that's a really tough one. That's Eli, a toughie. Really think about that one for a second. Yeah. I mean, Brian Hoyer, might, we were hearing reports today, might be signing a long-term gig yeah. deal there uh, in Cleveland. He's not a good fantasy option, Brian Hoyer, but he's a game manager. I'd obviously play him. I know you guys aren't really asking about Johnny. No, football. he's not asking about Johnny. Uh, but Eli Johnny Manning, too. Eli Manning, I think, rebounds and has himself a nice game. I really like Odell Beckham Jr. He impressed me. He earned the praise of Tom Coughlin there. Right. I know Victor Cruz being out is a huge hit. But you can't trust Andre Williams. Yeah. You know, he wasn't effective. He's not involved in the passing game there at all. So I really think he starts making a play. I think Larry Donnell rebounds this week as well as a tight end. All right, last question for you. Uh, Darren McFadden. I know you were just talking about another running back in Oakland, but Darren McFadden, what do we think about him? Play him this week as like a flex guy or a you know, uh, running back three option? Oh, boy. You yeah. guys don't know me at all. Darren McFadden is like the bane of my existence he, you in hate the fantasy Darren McFadden. world. I right. uh, would not draft him with a 10-foot pole. Wow. I think he would be a last resort. How do you really You can't feel trust him. him. I know he's coming off a great game. This is another team that's going to have to throw the ball. I like running backs in good offenses and ones that I can trust. He has yet to play a full season uh, in his entire career. I just – the entire running game there is shot. But – I do like the upside of a guy like Andre Holmes in the receiving game. There you go. I, I like love that. it. Kay Adams, thank you. So how can people follow you on Twitter, by the way, Kay Adams? At, hey, Kay Adams, send me your uh, venomous tweets if I, you know, talked badly about some Man, of your Man, it's options. an Guys, imperfect you can science. Watch us, Fantasy Zone, 704 at kickoff. We are on air right here in New York City, live fantasy analysis over live action. Well, thank and you so Michigan, much. And you're a you're a Spartan fan, right? Is that why you're wearing green? I'm, an, I'm a Tom Izzo fan, so I'm, you know, right. I guess I'm kind of right. right. I guess party. we can still like you. Sorry. Right. We can still make it we work. We can talk like Mario Manningham or other Michigan alum next there we time. Go. We we'll can do, do that. that. Thank you, Kay Adams. Really appreciate you uh, joining us today. Look at Bye, that. Guys. Fantasy report. Fantasy report. Did you get I, your answers? I did get my good? answers. Yeah. Get rid of Darren McFadden as quickly as I possibly can yes. and uh, play uh, Aaron Rodgers. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.